We're out here at Grandfather Mountain State Park, hiking up uh, the Profile Trail. We're going about three, three and a half miles and change today, about 1,700 feet of elevation gain. And then we're gonna set up camp and then spend the next day, mostly day hiking around the area. in some new boots today. <laughs> Probably should have found a way or a time to do that before getting out on the trail today, but you now that didn't work out, so here we are. I just had to stop because the laces untied themselves. So hopefully having double knotted them, they'll stay tied because that's helpful. So here is the signage for Callaway Peak. That's where we'll end up tomorrow. I don't think we'll get there tonight. We are just, like I said earlier, maybe three and a half miles to our campsite. We'll get set up, kind of take it easy for the evening and roll out for some day hikes in the morning. Uh, Hit the uh, Grandfather Trail, which takes us to the Top Shop, which is part of the uh, privately owned portion of Grandfather Mountain. So according to some of the signage we've seen, we've come in about a mile and a half uh, from the base of the profile trail. So we should have a little more than two to go, around two, before we're up to our site for the night. Yeah, the trail is punctuated with little flat areas and then steeper areas and then flat. So, so far it hasn't been too bad, but I suspect in the near future, we're gonna hit a more pronounced or protracted uh, steep section. So this region here, still, still got a couple of miles to go, but it is hard to see. Let me just tilt the camera down. But we are underneath a very high uh, overhang in the rock here. It's a cool little section. It's, uh, I don't know if you can hear it, you probably can. The uh, stream or the river, I gotta double check what body of water that is, but uh, it's one we just crossed over and one's right beside here. It's just a cool little section of the trail. And I've only been out on Grandfather Mountain one other time, and it wasn't the Profile Trail, it was the Daniel Boone Scout Trail, uh, and the Grandfather Trail, which we will be doing tomorrow. But portions of that have a lot of uh, rock scrambling, uh, some tunnels, so to speak, uh, just the way the rocks fell, uh, and ladders, lots and lots of ladders. But Usually on these trips when there's a bunch of us, I tend to be out in front. Well, that is not the case today. Uh, for some reason, I am just dragging. I mean, we'll get there. But this is, well, it feels a little atypical, but it's good to be humbled from time to time. I mean, other than that uh, flat seven miler we did back in March, on the Weetok Trail down in the Jones County. This 
trail has a lot more elevation change than 250 feet. And uh, yeah, I'm just not in shape. Oh well. So we're still on the profile trail. That's where we'll be all day. Well, I say all day, we got here late. And we'll be done with it in just a little bit, but we've got a little bit of a, of a clearing between uh, the trees here and some signage that uh, doesn't show up terribly well in the late afternoon. But we've got some views of actually all the way into Virginia. According to this signage, you can see Mount Rogers, which is the highest peak in Virginia. Um, from my vantage point, it looks like it's behind mountains that are still technically in North Carolina. Let me move over here a little bit. All right, so we've still got some switchbacks to go, but uh, we're making progress. We're starting to get into some of the campsites. I mean, you can see signs for one of them. We passed a couple of others, a couple of people that are staying there. And uh, we're just gonna keep continuing on. And uh, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but I don't know what's going on with me today. I'm just having a, having a time of it today. But I think tomorrow will be fine. It's largely gonna be day hiking, kind of a treat. Uh, where we're gonna to be tonight is a base camp, and then go out, come back. So I think, you know, after, uh, after some food tonight, some sleep, some breakfast in the morning, I think things will be better tomorrow. I'm hoping anyway. Well, you might not be able to see the sign from here, but we're at the Shanty Spring where we're going to do some water filtering so that we've got enough for the rest of the night and for breakfast, uh, whatever we'll need in the morning. All right, so we are at the Callaway Gap campsite. That's where we're going to be kind of setting up our base of operations for tomorrow. Actually, I'm going to turn this around so my head is not facing down. Good morning. It is uh, the next day. A lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but there's some wind this morning and because I'm a genius, I have no pants, just shorts and it's a bit chilly. But uh, I'm gonna get some hot oatmeal down my throat and hopefully that'll take the edge off a little bit. You can see, uh, well, I don't know if you can see Brian, but Matt and Brian are here. They have pants and sweatshirts, so. They're smarter than me, well, we which at the weather forecast. they actually look at crazy things like what the weather's going to be. And uh, yeah, I just didn't. We'll hit the top shop later today. Maybe they've got some Grandfather Mountain branded pants or something. But yeah, <laughs> probably not. But anyway, well, that's me. Well, OK, two, three, three survive, three survivors. Two froze to death. <laughs> Pantsless idiots. I'd rather have pants that needed to be waxed than no pants. I know that now. I, I, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I have two pairs of, of pants like that. No, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I think I hear. Oh, that's Matt turning his back on. Never mind. I haven't used white gas since maybe 2009. Worked fine once it got going, yeah. I got some 
banana oatmeal, some coffee. Not banana oatmeal flavored coffee. All right, so the deer, she came back into our into our campsite. A little bit closer. She's clearly used to humans. You know, she heard us talking, just being obnoxious, and she's more or less okay with that. But still, I don't want to spook her. It's just really cool to be able to see a deer. I mean, well, we see them all the time, but not this close, not this calm. scrambling now. Most of uh, today is going to involve, well, terrain like this as well as ladders, but I uh, always enjoy this kind of, this kind of uh, trail, especially when there's no 40 pound pack on my back. Another cool thing about this particular trail is there are a lot of very short, uh, I don't even think you could really call them trails, but just little uh, spots off of the trail where you can get out, look down into the valley, look up along the ridge. It's a, a lot of reward for not a lot of effort. Well, assuming that you don't count coming up the profile trail as effort, which it certainly was, but uh, starting out in the morning from our campsite, yeah, pretty, pretty uh, immediate gains for just a just a little bit of walking and scrambling. Still beautiful up there here. So we're just coming off the trail a little bit, Alpen Meadow. It's relatively flat. I mean, it's not flat, flat, but it's. Certainly not as, as rocky through here. Some grass, grassy area, not quite a bald, but still pleasant. Some rhododendrons that are in various stages of bloom. It's some that look like they're about to, about to open up. Some that do have a little bit of flowering down here. Let's see if I can find some other, other examples. a cool little cool little section we're just down a little bit of a uh, whatever you call this little uh, some rocks down here get a, a closer view of the valley because you know clearly from the ridge itself it's not close enough it totally is but uh, it's just cooler down here if you look out you can also see kind of where the uh, forest type changes and grandfather mountain is one of five, I believe, spruce fir forests that are typically more common in the, uh, the northeast. Um, I think four of them down in the southeast are in North Carolina. One of them might be in Virginia, maybe in the uh, either uh, Jefferson National Forest or maybe the Lewis Fork, Lewis Fork Wilderness or the Little Wilson Creek Wilderness. I forget. I'll have to, have to double check. But anyway, this is the kind of rock scrambly stuff that uh, it's always fun to do once you, uh, once you get a little bit of a chance. All right, so we've come to a little bit of a spur here. I don't know if I can get the signage in. Indian House Cave. So we're gonna go check that out. It's early in the day still, but it reminds me that uh, I should really find, make more opportunities just to do some kind of base camping day hiking type stuff because get yourself out there just set up for the night and then just not even have to worry about the next day within, well, within reason, but no hard and fast schedules, no hard and fast itinerary. The enjoyable sort of freedom with uh, that kind of 
openness. <laughs> so here's the Indian house cave with uh, what I'm sure are uh, ancient uh, petroglyphs. Totally not graffiti. Um, it is a very cool little overhang here. <laughs> yeah. Zach's going to give us the, uh, the walkthrough. It's an open concept. There we go. Maybe get a sense of overhang here. Let's see if I can. Maybe not, but it's impressive. It's probably, I don't know, 10, 12 feet, maybe 14, the highest. So on this rock, we are, well, for the moment, above most of the timber, 5,800 and change, where we are right now. And back in the, shoot, I don't remember if it's 18th century, I have to put the date down or look it up again, but uh, there's a French botanist, I believe his name was Andre Michaud, but uh, when he was out here exploring, he thought that Grandfather Mountain was the highest peak in the United States. Even in North Carolina, Grandfather Mountain is not in the top three, but because of its prominence, you know, it is elevated from its surroundings. It does come across as feeling higher than it really is. You do get some great 360 views come up here, spin around a little bit. So here's a fun little passageway, nice and steep. In with rocks. Let's see, Brian kind of wending his way down the trail right now. It does make a pretty cool frame though for just looking out into the into and across the valley here. With you? Yep. Because mine is back at the site as well. You know where it will do the most good. I prefer second aid. All right, so these are a little bit slick in places. That's why God gave me two hands. <laughs> one to hold the GoPro and one to flail wildly. We are down from that uh, steep section here. We're gonna go through this little bit of a tunnel feeling part of the trail here. And you can see the blazes. So this is legit trail. It's kind of a neat little passageway. It's more ladders. So we just came down the Underwood Trail from uh, where we were earlier today, where we uh, started out. Uh, we did pass a fork where you can either take the Grandfather Trail or the Underwood Trail down. We took the Underwood Trail down. We are going to take the Grandfather Trail uh, toward uh, McRae on the way back from the Swinging Bridge and maybe a uh, grandmother if we go out that way, depending on how we're feeling. But anyway, I can't remember if I was recording or not when I was talking about how all this terrain reminds me of some of the trails in Maine but they do, and I'll just leave it at that. It's awesome. Uh, and my friend Brian was talking about, well, not talking about falling, but uh, it's just kind of rock hopping. You know, the trail is more, more rock than uh, ground. And yeah, just kind of seeing how far you can go without touching ground, just touching rocks. You know, not even having to brace yourself. It's a fun game. Now we're at Grandfather Gap, signage right there. And you can look out and get some partial views. You know, we are in that low point between peaks here. So, so we are coming down into the parking lot of the Grandfather Mountain attraction. Uh, just 
just up a bit from, from the top shop and the swinging bridge. So the original top shop was built in 1952 and it was remodeled in, actually I don't remember, I'll have to put that down, but uh, one of the major points of remodeling was to improve the roof so it could uh, withstand winds of up to 130 miles an hour because as odd as that may seem, up here there are a lot of uh, strong winds in the winters. So we're climbing the stairs to the swinging bridge. We're gonna check that out and then uh, head into the top shop. There is a sign that we just passed. I'll uh, set up a photo later. It says uh, load 40 persons. That's actually not true. Uh, it can actually support a lot more than that. But originally, people were reluctant to cross this bridge more than one or two at a time because they weren't sure what its capacity was. It could probably hold, I don't know, 80 to 100, maybe not, but a lot more than 40, but just to at least give a number. They put 40 so that people wouldn't feel like they needed to just single file it. So after the bridge, I think, is Linville Peak. So, might just kind of swing out past there. Right, so we're done with lunch, a little bit of a break. Now we're heading out ultimately to uh, Grandmother. And then coming back, heading up toward McRae afterward and ultimately on to our campsite. Here you can get a bit of a view of the swinging bridge from underneath. Interesting perspective shift, as well as some of the cabling that uh, holds it, supports it. So we are at a point where we're headed to McRae Peak. Uh, it is in the background. I'm not sure which if I'm standing on the right side of it or not, but we've got a ways to go, and it's there's a lot of up on that ways. At McRae Peak now, there's one more ladder to climb to get to the topmost portion of it.
so we are finally back at camp, having come down from McRae. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think I need to just kind of sit down for a bit, maybe all night. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and uh, see how it goes. I guess it's time to start thinking about getting supper together. All right. Yeah, I'm tired. I gotta, I gotta sit down. I guess I'll set my chair up and do exactly that. We finished supper. We've got most things put away. It's cold, it's windy, and I should have brought a warmer sweatshirt. I'm gonna go hide in my sleeping bag. Well, it'll still be cold in the morning. There'll still be a little bit of warmth in between bouts of coldness. Yeah, I'm, I'm exhausted. So anyway, uh, catch y'all in the morning. Hey, it is the morning of day three. We are just uh, getting breakfast, finishing packing up our tents and gear. And then we should uh, have about three miles and change, mostly downhill uh, to the parking lot. It did rain last night, so everything's got a coating of water on it, which is well, it's par for the course sometimes, but it does uh, certainly make it harder to get started. I was the last one up this morning. I, was, I slept in, I was exhausted and uh, I still need to take my tent down. But that shouldn't take too long. I just have to uh, set it up once it's uh, once I'm back home, let it uh, dry out properly. No sign of uh, the deer this morning that was out here. She was out here uh, last night as well, uh, right around uh, twilight. I'm guessing she must kind of hang out here. We were gonna finish uh, packing up and head out shortly. So we are striking out. It is just, it's raining. And normally I bring a rain jacket, but not today. But uh, if and nothing else, it'll be a reminder to pack it for next time. coming up on Shanty Springs, which is where we filtered water for the first night. That's roughly four tenths to half a mile from where we spent, uh, well, nights one and two. So now it's just to continue on the way down. And we're continuing our way down the profile trail and I don't know how much you can see behind me uh, or around me. We are getting out of the spruce fir forests that uh, we were in yesterday up along the, uh, the ridge uh, on the grandfather trail. Now we're getting back down into, I don't know uh, off the top of my head what this kind of forest is called. I'll look that up and I'll, I'll put a note. Um, but you can tell the flora is different, more uh, more rhododendron, uh, different uh, different quality to the ground cover to the, the trees themselves. So it's just neat to pass through those, kind of get that sense of shifting from one zone to another. I love beans. not too far from the parking lot which brings this trip to 
and end well soon and end. Anyway, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Hope you enjoyed the, the trip and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time around. So take care.